Welcome to the Tweak of the Week. I'm Tommy Larkin, owner and chief experience officer of Optimal Movement, Fitness, and Yoga. This week, we take it a bit easy with a great rejuvenating pose which helps us de-stress and feel more energetic. Welcome back, and as always, I'm so happy you're joining me. Today I want to talk about a pose which can greatly benefit our overstressed systems. The pose is known as Viparita Karani, which we generally translate as waterfall. But in reality, this translation is a Western practitioner's shorthand. Viparita actually means reverse, contrary, against, or inversion. Karani means to be done, or to be made, or to be affected. So the real translation is better understood as to be done in reverse or to be made upside down. In fact, the Yoga Pradipika states that any inversion, like headstand or shoulder stand, can be called Viparita Karani. However, it also says the pose is one where the buttocks are supported by the hands with the legs straight and pointed upwards. Like with many poses, the form can dictate the name. So we call it waterfall because that is the shape and the look the pose illustrates. The legs are like the water falling off a cliff, which then pools in the belly like a clear mountain lake. As the lake of the belly fills, it rushes over the banks of the ribs, washing the heart and collects in the region of the throat. From there, like a river, it runs through the crown of the head and the tributaries of the arms. Wow, that description alone makes me feel more relaxed. So what are the real benefits of doing this pose? Well, at its core, it's a shoulder and chest opener, plus has a small back bend to it. It also can increase leg strength through the knee to keep the legs upright over the hips. However, the real benefits are not in the exterior physical aspects. These are really just secondary and set up the pose form. The real benefit is found in the way the reversal of internal fluids flows back towards the head and results in simultaneous relaxation and rejuvenation. Because the pose creates the aforementioned pooling effects in the abdomen and throat regions, it actually creates stimulated calm in the body, particularly with the parasympathetic nervous system, more specifically for the vagus nerve. The parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for rest and digest, as well as the feed and breed processes. By stimulating this system, we actually create a passivity in the sympathetic nervous system, thereby effectively turning off the switch for fight or flight. The vagus, which translates from its Latin roots as wandering, is greatly influenced by the pooling effect. The wandering flow of the nerve is associated with the thorax, esophageal, a abdomen, a cardiac, and pulmonary systems. To get much deeper in the anatomical review would actually take too much time. So suffice to say, I speculate the pauses caused by the angles in the body and the sort of stroking of the nerve in reverse creates a passivity which results from the effectual soothing of the nerve by the grounding effect of the flow. Unlike headstand, which puts all the inverted flow to the crown of the head, we only stimulate directly the pineal and pituitary glands and primarily the crown chakra. Headstands are very heating and tend to activate the sympathetic nervous system more. In addition, shoulder stands allow for some pooling in the throat, which can calm and ease the throat chakra, but because of the very active nature of the posture, it still tends to be a sympathetic nervous system, system stimulator. This brings us back to the benefits of Viparita Karani. When working on the pose with the hands supporting the hips or even using a block, you have a more active interaction with the pose. The heart, lungs, and abdomen must work with a slight vigor, but the soothing of the thorax region keeps the sympathetic nervous system from overacting. As a result, this variation is a great alternative to doing full shoulder stand. If we approach the pose from a more restorative viewpoint, we can gain even more benefits to the posture. By using the wall and supports under the hips, we can relax more and hold the pose for an extended period of time. This increases the calming results of the parasympathetic nervous system. If we hold the pose for about 10 minutes, then the end results are in a rejuvenation of internal energy. 
So if you are feeling sluggish after a long day at work and need a little pick-me-up, then 10 minutes in Viparita Karani will do the trick. Now, let me say one thing here. When you come out of the postural hold, you might feel a little tired. But after your body is readjusted to being upright and not in a resting position, you will feel a new level of energy and vibrancy. So let's look at the pose and the three ways I recommend practicing Viparita Karani and the supports that we might need or want to use. Okay, so option number one is using the hands, or as I'm going to recommend for this week's tweak, to use a block. The block is a little more stable. You don't have to worry about your wrists. If you're going to be there for a long period of time and you're not used to using your hands, the block is very helpful. By all means, try it with your hands, and I encourage you to move to that. That is the end result as direction we would like to go for this option. But with the block, as you'll see here in the illustration, you want to have the block under the sacrum so that it lies flat and with a little feeling that the sit bones can drop to the far side of the block, right? Now they're not really going to go down, it's just that, that sitting of the angle. So that when you lift the legs straight up over the hips, you have that solidness on the block. In the chest of the back bend, which is very much like bridge or moving towards shoulder stand or even plow pose, halasana, right? The shoulders are tucking under. You have that very open feeling of cow in the chest and of the shoulder blades really pressing in towards each other and into the heart, right? You want to have a soft throat, soft jaw, and activeness in the legs to keep them straight and upright. Now the second option is lying flat on the ground. So this is really good if you want to do this at work or you don't have any props handy like you're traveling or something like that. You can do it on the floor. Some of the benefits are not quite as deep but because you don't have as much of the waterfall angle from the belly to the heart and the, and the throat but it is still great for especially for rejuvenating if you're feeling a little bit tired or sluggish. Now on a side note block or uh, the next one like a bolster, you can use a number of books stacked on top of each other if you like. You, there's all sorts of ways that you can use props if you don't have what we might call, call specifically yoga props. All right, so there's the illustration for flat on the ground. You're going to use the wall to help support yourself so you can rest the legs a little bit more and that's part of the benefit of option two and three in being more supported and rejuvenating. Option number three is using a bolster or a few blankets folded up to be about uh, the height of a bolster, right? You want to have just enough height that you get that little crest in the ribs down to the shoulders. The shoulders here do not really tuck under that much, so you don't have to worry about a lot of opening or prep for the opening of the chest and the shoulders like going into shoulder stand. That's not needed here, right? It's very much about being relaxed. All right, so to come down, you want to sit next to the bolster and then roll over on it. It's the easiest way. And again, you're going to use the wall and you'll have to find the distance for yourself. Ideally, the legs are in the, in the back of the legs and the, and the sit bones are all sitting against the wall. But if your hamstrings are tight and restrict that, you move away from the wall as much as you need to. All right, so the other thing about the width of the bolster is you don't want it too wide that it restricts the shoulders from lying down comfortably on the ground and that you can get that little bit of tuck that will come in the shoulder blades. All right. In the one flat, option number two flat on the ground and option number three, the arms eventually want to be overhead resting on the ground. That's the, the river of what the flow can wash through the head and the arms but if that's not comfortable or you feel some tinge in your shoulders or a little bit of numbness from having them overhead which is very common just put the hands on the ground in a shavasana like position or even rest them on the belly that's perfectly fine it does not change the depth of the rejuvenation and for more inspirational words of wisdom and other tips tricks and general news check out our instagram page at Om Fitness Yoga or on Facebook at Om Fitness and Yoga. 
I hope you liked today's tweak, and again, thank you for joining me. Until next week, be excellent to one another, and have an amazing day.